So this meeting is now being recorded. Everyone should know that it will be posted to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for viewing by the public. Thanks everyone for being here. Welcome, this is the Jones Library Design Subcommittee. It's Friday, May 13th at 9 a.m. And uh, for call to order, I'll just announce who's here. <clears throat> uh, we have uh, Sharon Shari, we have Austin <laughs> Surratt, and um, we are missing George today, is my understanding, okay. And we have Craig DiCarlo, um, our OPM, and of course, um, our completely always needed Angela. So uh, we'll get started. Just quick administrative thing. We have uh, minutes from the 29th that you would have all received. So, so sorry, Christine, can we just do a sound check to make sure that you, you can oh, hear everyone? Sure. Yep. And, and talk a little bit about open meeting law suspension. Oh, I don't have that on. Um, oh, shoot. I don't have that weird thing that you gave. Hold on. So um, I didn't know we had to do that for subcommittee too. So if you uh, three can just say that you, yes, that you're here and that you hear us and. I'm Sharon Sherry and I am here. And I'm Austin Serrett and I am present. And this is Craig DiCarlo with Soundcheck. All right, I don't have a printed version. So Angela, if you could just help me, what a, if you paraphrase sure. what I'm supposed to say about the- So this meeting is taking place virtually and we welcome the public um, to speak at um, public comment later in the meeting. Uh, this um, suspension of meeting face-to-face uh, -face was enacted by Governor Baker as a result of the pandemic. And we once again, thank everyone for joining us. Great. Exactly what you said is what I, I need is a printout or an email. That would be great. And then I can memorize it and babble it off every time. Um, so great, welcome. Welcome everyone. And we'll go to item two minutes. Uh, we have from the Friday the 29th, which was the last time we met. Uh, so if I have a motion to approve the minutes, I move that you approve that we approve the minutes. Great. And do I have a second? Second. Oh, great. Okay. Are there any comments or changes that are um, adjustments that we saw? Uh, and since it's just the two of you, Austin and Sharon, just speak out. Like so. Okay. Looks like everybody's good with them. So uh, to approve, I'll roll call. I'll just say, um, Sharon. Yes. Austin. Yes and myself, three, and that's all we have for today. Great, thank you, and thank you, Angela. So we will go to item three, which is uh, welcome, Craig, and we have three items listed. Uh, you can do them in any order, however you want, Craig. Um, Fantastic, thank you. May I share my screen? Yes, please. While you're doing that, I just want to announce to everyone, I think we all know, but uh, so the public knows, item four with the Feingold Alexander Architects, they will not be on the agenda today because they just didn't have enough to come and actually show us and they will be at the next meeting in two weeks um, and they'll have something to present to us. So that will shorten the meeting. Very good. All right, so here's the latest schedule, which is what I presented at the most recent uh, building committee meeting, uh, library building committee. Um, just a real quick recap for folks at home who uh, were not at that or did not uh, observe that meeting. This is the um, expanded or uh, modified schedule. I've added some information, specifically a timeline for the temporary location. Um, something that we discussed at this meeting, at, this, at the previous version of this design subcom meeting, was adding a red line to help us track as this project moves along. Um, I also added some dates, approximate dates for the completion, anticipated completion for each one of these items. Um, and that's over here on the left hand side of the screen. Um, I also made a correction to when we can realistically anticipate move in and occupancy. Uh, previously, it was in January. 
um, but that wasn't giving the contractor full use of the site for 18 months. Um, so I, we, we slid that over. So that looks like a, uh, a delay, but it was actually just a, a mistake. Um, and I think that was it that I changed about this. So here we are in May um, and we are in schematic design, the official start of Feingold Alexander's, you know, full press effort in schematic design was on this May 9th date. So they've only, and that is um, the reason why they're not ready to present anything today is because they've been only been going at things for a week. Um, they do report that they'll be ready, as you were mentioning, Christine, at the May 27th meeting to show us some updated plans. Also, um, we, pre at the prior version of this meeting, we talked about um, gender, um, gender inclusivity, specifically as it relates to the bathrooms. And that's something also that they're looking into and will report on at the next meeting. I think that's it for my timeline update, unless there are any questions. Great. Um, next, public outreach. So I'll pull up this guy here. So as we discussed at the last design subcommittee, um, Alex Lafarve has done a fantastic job at converting all the comments that have been received into a format that is usable and trackable. Um, it's uh, currently being um, hosted on, on a web platform, so we don't have any issues of versioning, which I think is a great idea. Um, what this is here is a snapshot. So um, I think on, so on May 11th is when I sort of pulled a copy down from, from the live version and quickly went through and identified um, in yellow things, that, um, comments that I think the design team would like to have some direction on at this point in the project. Some decision, as we've discussed in the past, some decisions are things that won't need to be done until um, you know, months from now, others are things that should be talked about right away and everything in between. So um, quickly going through, I identified sort of my, you know, just based on what I was reading and uh, my um, interpretation of the comments, what I thought this committee could talk about now and then feed into the design team. So I'll sort of put that off to the side for now, but that's where things stand on that. And then with construction costs, there's no um, changes since our last meeting. Um, things stand at the, the, the most recent construction cost estimate was at uh, for 30.3 million, I'm sorry, 30.8 million, including the uh, CLT, the heavy timber structure, cross laminated timber. So that puts us at $3.9 million over our budget for the, for um, the project and currently that budget stands at 36.3 million. So no changes there. Great. <clears throat> so um, if we can circle back to the uh, public comments, um, first shout out to Alex Lefebvre for um, doing that spreadsheet. It's great. and. I looked through Craig uh, under the review date column that you were sort of saying things like to identify today that we should look at to start mm, feeding them or whatever to the designer. Um, so how do you suggest we weigh these? You know, we do have frequency and some are like 10 and some are like one, um, but that, doesn't, you know, that's one factor to look at them, but the other one is, um, you know, do we want to tell the designer to even consider the comment? So how should we, if you have any insight, how should we do this? Sure. Um, so my recommendation, even though it may seem a little daunting because there's a, you know, I'm going to guess there's probably a hundred comments that I've highlighted. Um, I think we can go through them pretty quickly. Um, so if you, if you want either in this forum or, or uh, offline, um, if you were to take a look at them, um, we could pretty quickly put them into different categories of um, this is something that we like and we are 
already anticipating incorporating it to the design. This is something we like and we're gonna recommend, but we're not sure if it can go into the design. Um, so we're gonna recommend Fine Gold Alexander to take a look at it uh, and other things that may be a great idea, but um, aren't necessarily achievable based on what we know now. Can I just or ask, like, um, Craig, so, okay, so I have, I have not looked uh, at your, the yellow, like what, what the design team needs to know now. And I absolutely, I trust the process. I trust how you're directing us. My question is, and this is with me not even reading. So I don't, I don't even know what we're talking about yet. My question is what if we agree to, you know, the first, the first 10 items that, that, that are frequently mentioned, everybody loves, but then by the end -ish of this process, we're obviously not going to finish this today. Um, and then we come to things that have even a higher frequency mention, and we like it even more, then is that, is that a problem? Um, so if I understand the question, so you're talking about if there's something that we like the idea, it's mentioned once or twice, there's a, in the, in, in the future or later, we look at another idea that's got more popularity, let's say, but is contradictory to the first idea. Contradictory or way more expensive. Okay. Like, like do, do, are the decisions that we're looking at today and in the following weeks, is, is that affecting the budget or is it just affecting space? So in, in general, the, the ones that I flagged for discussion now are things that would affect the layout perhaps okay. um, things that would affect the building massing. Okay. Um, uh, I think those are the two, two big categories I looked at. Okay. So kind of putting my mind or putting myself into fine go Alexander's shoes, yeah. you know, what they're going through now. Um, these are the types of comments that will maybe help shape the design. So there's, there wasn't a whole lot that was very, there wasn't a whole lot of, there weren't very many comments that were, um, very explicit okay. or very uh, concrete. Like we want such and such a room to be painted blue. It was more like more general ideas. And so those types of things, so if we say, all right, well, we've got these hundred things, we go through them quickly. Um, these are the 25 we want Fine Gold Alexander absolutely to you know, incorporate into the design to the extent possible. Here's another 25 that we would like them to look at and see if it's possible. And there might be some contradictions between those two. And then here's another set where just right off the bat, we, you know, you know, if some, not that this was a comment, but if someone wanted to put like a, a water slide indoors, we could say like, you know, that would be really fun. That maybe goes from the dream board, but it, we know it's not realistic to, uh, to include that in the design. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, I agreed with, the ones that you highlighted, Craig, there were a couple, and sometimes it's hard to understand like what the comment, you know, cause someone puts a comment, but we're trying to get in their head what that meant. Like there's, if you could, there was 172, I think it was comment line 172. You like me to share, share the screen again? Yeah, if you want to, it, it was, I'll just read it. It said historic priorities um, dash stone exterior, which I assume they're saying, they want more stone exterior, but it's hard to tell. But six people actually said like, yeah, they back that. However, they read the comment, they liked it. Um, so that one wasn't highlighted, you know, so I just wanted to ask you again, like, were you really firm on what you were highlighting or should we also be like, I don't know, do a second pass or? We can certainly do another pass. I did go through them pretty quickly, but with that particular one, um, the exact um, material that goes on the exterior of the building is not a decision that Feingold Alexander is working on right now. Um, okay. So they're doing mostly layout and, you know, massaging the plans to get everything to fit in and get those adjacencies and relationships worked out well. Um, so those are the comments that I was kind of culling and, and highlighting in yellow. Thank you for saying, excellent. Okay, so we, I also have to remind everyone that this is sort of like a rolling thing. Like we're taking a snapshot right here. In fact, 
today is the 13th or, um, but actually when I, you have review date, but we actually have to look at, all right, this date received when it was received, right? So some of these are the first, the 11th. Um, so do we have to, as a design team today, well, obviously we can't get through them all today. When do you think we need to get our first grouping to the designer? I think it. I think they the information can go in sort of a rolling basis um, as decisions are made or uh, the committee decides these are things that you want Feingold Alexander to either incorporate or look into. I think you know the sooner we get that information to Feingold Alexander, the better. Um, but I don't think there's a hard and fast date. And I think uh, to sort of address the comment of um, you know we won't necessarily be able to get through all these today. Um, I guess maybe we could do like a, a sample, say like, all right, let's take a look at just 10 or 20 and then see how long it takes to get through. Cause you're right. And some of them may be longer, more involved conversations and maybe those ones get tabled. Um, I liked Sharon's idea. If we could sort the table by ones you've highlighted and then maybe by frequency um, and just see where we sit at that point. And then pick, I also, I see Austin, your hand, Austin. So I just want to thank you, Christine, and thank, thank Craig and Alex, obviously, for this. Um, I, I don't want to get us hang, hung up in conversations about process, but I think we need to talk a little bit about the process. And mm -hmm. here, I, uh, Sharon or Craig can be helpful. So... We, we are a subcommittee of the building committee. So if we want the Burnett Gallery moved to the front of the building, let's say, is that for us to tell the architects or is that for us to tell the Jones Library Building Committee and for the building committee to tell the architects? Now, I understand that there's a, we need to do this now kind of imperative and the next building next building committee is in for 10 days from now. But as I've understood our charge, it was to make recommendations to the building committee. Uh, but but maybe that's maybe that's not accurate. That's number one. Number two, uh, I find these comments all helpful. Uh, but the help that they give me is they help me think about what the Jones Library Building Committee uh, should want to do with the design of the library. Uh, and when I looked at the spreadsheet, I looked at them not so much with frequency because the numbers are going to be small and the numbers are always going to be unrepresentative. We don't know who those 10 people were. But I looked at them from the point of view of, gee, I hadn't thought of that. Or, gee, I thought of that, and this really makes me really want to drill down. So I, I just want to make sure that we know what we're doing in terms of communicating whatever we think to whom we are communicating it. Austin, I think you, first off, I want to say on your second comment, I think you pointed out something that is very important, that you're right, all of these comments are really interesting, thought provoking at a minimum and need to at least be looked at. And my thinking is that the building committee as a whole needs to read through all these comments, just like we are, because you're right. It gives you insight on, you know, not just what the comment is, but sometimes the opposite of what the comment is saying. Like it just gets you thinking. Um, so, and that process, I agree with you. Craig, first off, should we be giving all of these comments? Like, I don't want to overwhelm the designer and then just highlight ones that we want them to act on, which then triggers process. Because Austin said, like, do we decide like where the entrance is or whatever? Like, I don't see us as deciding anything, but more trying to narrow this down to be more feasible for the designer to be able to give options for items that like the entrance, 
we, we can use that as an example. So Craig, do you have insight on how process and what does the FAA actually get from us? Certainly. So um, Feingold Alexander will benefit most from um, clear direction from, let's just say, the, the community of Amherst, whether it's you know this, this subcommittee or the library building committee. Um, so to the extent that that message or that package of comments says, these are the ones we as a community want you to look into, um, or maybe like I said, those two buckets, these are the ones we definitely want to incorporate. These are the ones we want you to look into the feasibility of incorporating. Um, the clearer that direction can be to find gold Alexander, the better. Because what puts them in a real quandary is if, we pass them two comments that are say mutually exclusive or contradictory. Yeah. Then they, you know, it's not their place to say which one is right, which one should be followed, which one is better for the community. They might have an opinion on it. They may say, well, you've given us these two. And that is actually, now that I'm saying that, that is something that um, if there are two sort of options, it's like, all right, we want up, we want down. <laughs> we could, you know, the community could say to Fangal Alexander, Hey, we're considering these two things. We they seem to be equal. Which one do you think from uh, you know in your based on your expertise, which one's going to give us a better product? Which one's going to give us a better building? Um, okay. So how about Sharon Austin? Tell me what you think. What if we did sort these and just start with ten and just see? how our discussion goes, you know, how much in the weeds or is it, you know, and just feel them out as examples on how to handle them as an experiment. And I do, we keep coming back to this. I mean, maybe there's four options. There's one, like it's already being done. Two, we definitely want this included in their the design. Two is maybe in the design. I mean, three, that's number three, maybe in the design and they can give us feedback on it. And then option four is, um, well, we don't, which then we, I, there's, let me throw it out to you. If, if we all, us three, going back to sort of Austin, like if we determine like, no, we won't send this comment to the designer, well, what happens to it? We just don't send it to them. And it, like, how should we handle this? We should can I, can yeah. I say, so, um, and, what as I'm briefly reading over the screen, a lot of these things I, I'm, I'm agreeing with Craig. We can whip them off in yeah. in no time because it's like, well, yes, absolutely, that's included. So, but that being said, so so what I'm asking you guys now is the value of doing this live uh, while everybody's on the Zoom screen, or can we give ourselves this homework assignment? Okay, everybody, take this spreadsheet home, sit down with it, and and decide whether it's a yes, definitely, it's a maybe, or it's a no way, and, and then meet again before two weeks. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, that way we're not, I don't want to waste anybody's time. I, I, like, I was thinking the same thing, like maybe we should all individually go through them thinking of, however, I mean, I just threw out those four options, but maybe we need to just refine that is the process. And then I'd be up for coming back and because sometimes I might think, uh, well, maybe in the design, and then Sharon, something comes out of your mouth about, and, I, and it's like, oh, oh, of course, it's a definitely in design, you know. I'm just saying we would still have that conversation. Yeah, so the right. three of us, four of us, George, we would all come back and we would still discuss, but maybe it would be faster because we would have all looked at the whole first. And are you talking about the entire spreadsheet um, or just the highlighted ones? Definitely the highlighted. I mean, personally, I would do the whole thing. Austin, what do you think? Austin. Um, thank you. Um, uh, this is what I think. I, I think that uh, we should all look at the whole spreadsheet. We should concentrate on the things that Craig has highlighted because he's given us some help. That's number A. Number B. Craig, did you highlight the location of the Burnett Gallery? 
Yes, I believe I can. Oops. Burnett. Hope I'm spelling that right. My goodness. Find all. All right. So it looks like we've got maybe 12 comments from the Burnett right. Gallery. Right. One of them had to do with uh, the location. Did, did it not? High visibility, easy to find, prominent location. Oh, did you spot it already? Yeah, it's High visibility. number yep. four on the list. Yep. Okay, that had 10 comments, right? So that's a, yes. a lot of the people, I shouldn't say that, 10% of the people who came to the event made, made this comment. Okay, so let's think for a minute, if, if we can, Christine, in a kind of thought experiment. Uh, Sharon, remind us where the Burnett Gallery is located now. Right now on the garden level. Right. What would be the implications of moving the Burnett Gallery from where it presently is imagined to be? Sharon is smiling. Yeah, yeah. That's because that's that's like the million dollar question. Uh, FAA would, would roll over and, and use some swear words at me, I think. Just because it, it's not simple, like the whole the whole issue that FAA is having right now is taking all of these pieces that are all these different shapes and sizes and trying to fit them into these very specific holes that are in these locations that cannot be moved because of the 1928 you know those walls that are there and and we want to leave as many of those walls there as possible so it's such a complicated thing so i feel like we could say to faa yeah i agree with that that would be fabulous it would if the gallery were the first thing people saw when they came in and, and then let faa say to us i'm sorry it's just not happening on the first floor or yes it can happen on the first floor so i think it's important for us to kind of, um, I, I want to press back on what you just said. Craig, take down your screen share for a minute, would you? Sure. So, uh, do you really think it would be fabulous to have the gallery as the first thing that people saw? Or you think that it would really be fabulous if when people came to the library, they had a kind of unimpeded, you know, the Cirque desk. So I just think it's important for us to like, Try to be real. I mean, it's a wonderful idea to highlight the Burnett Gallery. But we're, 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 we've got to think of the whole thing and how it's going to work. And uh, you want people coming into the library and kind of pausing through the, at the Burnett Gallery. I mean, so I, I thought, gee, that's a really interesting idea. It would not have been on the top of my list for redesigning this um, the interior spaces to accommodate uh, putting the Burnett Gallery in a more bit. Now we'd have to talk about what more visible means. But uh, I looked at that one. I thought, gee, that's a great idea. I love the Burnett Gallery. It's a treasure for the library. But that's not one that I would put at the top of my list of priorities. Can I just comment on on the comment we're reading? You know, if you unpack it it says first it was high visibility, which is subjective, right? Does that just mean good wayfaring or signage or a really welcoming door? You know, easy to find, same thing. Is it, you know, I think people are coming from the existing Jones that it can be really hard to find certain rooms right now, like impossible. And then the third was prominent location. I think the library still needs to function as a library as its first purpose and galleries are wonderful but you know you can never forget it's a library so the designers I think when we unpack this it had three parts and I think it had a lot of different ways to think about it so it did get a lot of checks but was it all 10 people saying they want it prominent like when you walk in the front door I don't know we might be reading into that too much um, so is it a, so there's a comment what do we do with it, I think, is the process. So if we're putting it into our little machine here of evaluation, like you said, what do we do with it? Do we forward it to the designers? We're just saying, 
you know, it isn't just prominent. We want the the gallery to be easily found or welcoming or. So Christine, my view yeah. is what we do. The design committee has to have conversations uh, with the design committee. The design committee then should make recommendations to the building committee. And uh, the building committee will endorse those recommendations and send them on to find all Alexander or not. And they, what you just said, I found incredibly helpful. Uh, you know, we recommend to the building committee that the architects be asked to make sure that there is fill in the blanks, adequate signage, adequate lighting, adequate whatever, not that the Burnett Gallery be moved from the, where it is currently. And let's make, let's, let's do the job. Let's make a list of, here's what we recommend. And that's going to come from uh, our understanding of the design of what we've got and our um, benefiting from uh, the comments that we've, we've gotten. We're going to get more comments. Public outreach is not mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I take Sharon's point. Let's do some homework. Let's look at the thing. Let's come back prepared to discuss and say, and each one of us could say, this is what I'd like to recommend that the Jones Library Building Committee convey to the architects. And then we could have a conversation about that. And you, on behalf of the design committee, can present the recommendations from the design committee to the Jones Library Building Committee. And again, with the appropriate notion that this is an iterative process, we're going to get more comments. The design is going to develop. So, how about how about we how about we do that? I think that's a really good way of what you're bringing up. How we should look at these comments, not just look at the comment as the comment, because it isn't always clear what the intention was as the full suggestion or what people had in their mind when they wrote that or checked it. Um, and maybe some of these can be grouped together. You know, so I guess what Austin's saying, like we kind of just did that one that we just evaluated, right? We were gonna morph our comment a little bit in response to the comment to send to the designer. And there may be some that get grouped together. So that's what we should keep in mind as we're going through, maybe make some notes. Um, so our homework will be to go through all the highlighted ones with that in mind, with sort of thinking about, is it already in? It definitely needs to be evaluated, maybe, um, or like just not, a, it just doesn't work or it's not whatever, we can figure that out. Um, when, how long do you, and Sharon, can you explain this to either have him watch yes. this or explain to him, great. Will do. So how quickly do you think we could meet again? To, it would be great to, if we could meet next week. Yeah. And to me, it's a meeting, but it's sort of a working meeting, yeah. if that makes sense. We're just sort of like if we were actually at work in a room grinding through them, trying to I don't know if us if Austin can hear us, but um, yeah. So, are, would are we thinking like next Friday or a different day? Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday, if possible. Wednesday or Thursday. I'll give Angela time to post it. Yeah, that's true. She'll just write. Um, Wednesday, I'm really open. Thursday's a little harder for me, but Austin. Eat the fingers. Okay. <laughs> and what about you, Craig? And yeah. I don't necessarily need to be there. I don't yeah. think for this discussion. Um, but uh, Wednesday, I'll join if I can. But Wednesday, I'm, I'm book solid. Um, Thursday, Thursday, I have some openings. And then Friday, I have a lot of openings. But don't wow. schedule around me. I'll, I'll join if I can. So if Austin's still listening, Thursday, morning is okay i can work that somehow was thursday morning good for you sharon let me check and what did you say friday craig you have so are you friday not good for you sharon uh thursday i'm wide open and friday 
morning, I would only be available after 11. Okay. And that's both fine with me. Sorry about that. What, what day are you talking about now? So we do have Wednesday. We have Thursday uh, morning or Friday after 11. You talk about the 19th? Yes. At what time? Nine. That works for me. And that works for you, Sharon. And yeah. Craig, are you available at all or no? Yeah. Thursday at nine, I'm not. And it's probably fine. I think we can grind through us like 80% of them mm -hmm. and then we'll just flag <laughs> ones that were like, eh. But I, okay. I make a contra contrary yeah. suggestion. I think yeah. it's important for Craig to be with us when we do this because he may say, you know, gee, that's really great. But <laughs> if you recommend that, it's gonna, the building's gonna have to be built upside down. So I'd like to find a time if we can, when okay. Craig would be part of that converse, conversation. Okay, uh, th thank you, Austin. So I don't want only... Craig to think that, I don't want Craig to think that he's indispensable, but. <laughs> he is, he, he totally is. So nine to 10 on Thursday the 19th, nine to 10 is my morning obligation. <laughs> I've got a meeting and then I've got another meeting um, in the afternoon, but I don't think we're talking about afternoon. So I'm I'm free starting at 10 ish until 1 p.m. Oh, can we do 10 on Thursday, or do you want 10:30? I mean, I know you're rolling out of one meeting. 10:30 would be ideal. <laughs> so we've got next Thursday the 19th at 10:30. We will meet and we will have gone through these and sort of rank them and put some comments and we'll see where we can go with it. Could Craig, uh, for those of us that are technology challenged, could Craig um, uh, email us as an attachment, the highlighted spreadsheet? Absolutely. Thank you. All right. So we're good with that for Thursday. Um, and um, Austin, you do have your hand up, but does anyone have any other comments for the OPM or for how to handle these comments? Okay, I don't see anything. So again, I'll move on to item four, uh, Feingold Alexander Architects. They are not here today because they just started schematic design and they asked for another couple of weeks um, to come back with something more significant for us. So great. Um, item five, benchmarking library visits. Saw your doodle poll, Craig, thank you. Yes, um, so unfortunately there's no home run. There's no <laughs> day that works for everybody. I really have my fingers crossed, but to sort of clue in the, the, the public. Um, so the idea is we have these three libraries that have been recommended to the community to tour. Um, Holyoke, which is nice and close, Medford Public Library and Woburn Public Library. I believe that all, I have not contacted libraries yet. Uh, that's something I will do uh, once we have a day sort of blocked out. But the idea is I think all three of them can be visited in one long day. Um, let's see, what else did I wanna bring up about that? So we've got responses from Alex, Lafarve, George, um, Christine, Sharon, Austin, and Ginny Hamilton. And like I said, there's no one day where everyone can do all the tours. I broke up the doodle poll into like a morning session, which is Holyoke, and then, uh, oh, that's early morning, and then late morning through evening would be to get to Medford and Woburn and then get back. Um, so there are some, some options. Um, it looks like the two days, and I and I did I looked at May 18th, which would be next Wednesday, same as we were talking about earlier. Give Angela time to post it as a public meeting, uh, just make sure our bases are covered. May 18th, all the way through June 11th, basically every day that those three libraries are open, which is 
Monday through Saturday with the exception of uh, Memorial Day. So out of all those days, there weren't, there wasn't one that everyone could go to. The two that looked um, most promising are uh, June 8th and June 10th. Um, unfortunately, George is not available either time. So Austin and George have kind of um, opposing availability. Austin was available more in June, George is available more in, in May. Uh, but we can get everybody except George on the 8th or the 10th with a caveat that, Christine, your schedule um, indicated you were not available in the morning um, on those days. And I wanted to ask about the 10th. Were you not available because that is the day that, that we have this meeting scheduled or was there well, something? I'm else? actually on vacation the, oh. those two weeks of June, but it's near Boston. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I was like, oh, I can do the the afternoon session the two, but I won't be out here but I also knew that the Holyoke one is close enough I'm like well I could go do that on my own worst case yeah. or I didn't know if I know you're trying to do it all in one day I didn't know if it was an option if you would then split it and do one day that is to try to capture more people you know what I'm going to say yeah. yes uh, that's actually uh there's potential there for sure so how would you, I don't want to be the one to sort of make the, the call on which day is best or, you know, who should be there, who shouldn't. Um, I believe everyone who has submitted information to the poll can see everyone else's availability. So um, yes. I would ask that um, somebody other than me go through and look and say, okay, this is what we want to do. And I like the, uh, the ideas, Christine, that you came up with about maybe doing the Holyoke one one day maximize the number of people who can do that and then Medford and uh Woburn another day um that should be no problem to set up um but so yes I would look I would look to someone on the Amherst side to uh tell me which days they want and I will make the calls and uh schedule them chicken <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craig again I'm sorry to be the technology one can you resend the link so that uh, those of us <laughs> I want to have it right in front of us can uh, can look. Yep. And I have it here if you want me to uh, pull it up on the screen, if you want to just take a quick peek now, but otherwise I'll forward it to everyone. Do you guys want to look at it now? <laughs> you know, our I'm building actually, committee meeting. I'm is looking at it right now on the doodle from your previous email. Um, how do Sharon and Austin, right off the bat, how do you feel about splitting the days? Is that an option? I think it's it would be great to, to split it. Um, but I, what was I going to say? Oh, so the building committee, we meet as a whole on the 24th. So um, it doesn't make sense for us to decide without everybody else. Um, so why don't uh, we, we'll, we'll come back with a recommendation for you, Craig. How does that sound? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So the 24th. So we, you want to wait till then to finalize all this or the dates? I'm not sure how else to do it without chatting with the full committee. Um, I, so thinking out loud, how many of them really want to go? And I don't know. Oh, Craig, how many people, were, I'm sorry, how many people responded to the doodle? Um, six, I believe, in addition to me. Okay. Um, and, and, I, and to be fair, I did in the email uh, invitation said, hey, please have this, your comments by the end of the day Friday. So there may be someone else who's going to look at it today and, and add their availability. So this is what I think we should do, Christine, if it's okay. Um, I think we should uh, operate on the basis of who responds to this doodle poll. Craig, you should send a reminder to people um that they need to get their things in by the by the end of the day uh once we know what the things are we're going to pick some dates and the people who can make it can make it if they can't make it they can't make it they're free to go to these libraries they're open to the public um at any point that they like i think the idea of splitting the visit going to holyoke one day and then going east for the for the others Makes a, makes a lot of sense. But let's just send a reminder to people, if you're really interested in doing this, we're gonna be 
you know, scheduling it. And then let's, let's schedule it. And some people are going to make it and some people are not going to make it and things are going to come up. People who say they're going to make it are going to end up having to have surgery or something like that. So, Right. It's, from COVID, we know it's all about plan B. Um, so, Craig, that's great. If you could send out an email reminding everyone to do it, but also just put a line in there to say that we might split it into two different days, a morning session and afternoon, and for people to have that in their head. Because I know I was evaluating them pretty much just like a whole day thing, but I'd have more flexibility. I might even go back in there again and give it a hard look if we're trying to split it. Um, and then we could maybe next Thursday at that meeting, um, when we're meeting for the comments, we could also finalize the dates then. How's that? So if that's the case, then a few of these earlier dates, Craig, that you set up are obviously not going to happen. And you could probably remove those. Yep. So it wouldn't really start until... <clears throat> So if we decided on Tuesday, uh, oh no, uh, Thursday, the 26th, then we really, I mean, what would be the soonest option? Because uh, we have, do we have to, we have to post this, right, Angela? Like, yeah, so it wouldn't start until the next, like the Tuesday, the 31st. So 31st and whatever dates we had. And if we can't make that work, if we split it, then, <laughs> then we'll just have to put a camera on your head, Craig, and you'll have to do a video for us. All right, so we're good with that. By the way, Christine, yeah. I actually think that was a, that quip was a very smart <laughs> idea, not a camera Sorry, on the Craig. head. But I wonder if uh, one could, you know, FaceTime or whatever it is with, with people. I mean, this is, this is like second nature to real estate agents. So, right, Craig? I mean, we could just take a camera for people who can't physically come. You know, this is what, the, this is what it looks like. Pan the room. You got a GoPro, Craig? Uh, my daughter does, or my oldest <laughs> child does, so yeah. We put it on our cat, but yeah, I could take it off. <laughs> All right, we'll give that some thought off. I mean, it, you're right. It would be interesting to hear because that's part of why we're going. We want to hear sort of the tour, what that representative from the library is giving us lessons learned and such that, you know. Okay, we'll see if we can high tech this. Um, if there's no other comments, I'm gonna move on to item uh, six, topics not anticipated. I don't have any. Um, we'll move to item seven, which is the public comment. And at this time, public, hello attendees out there. If you have something to say, would like to speak, uh, please raise your hand now and we will uh, give you that time. I see five people, um, I'm not seeing any hands. I'll give it another minute. Um, so our next meeting is, I'm just still giving that a sec, will be next Thursday at 1030. Thank you, Angela. I'll get you an um, agenda to put up for that. Um, and thank you, Craig, for sending out a follow-up email on the doodle poll. All right, so I don't see any hands, so I'm going to move on to adjournment, and I'll see you all next Thursday. Happy weekend, and have fun with your homework. Thank you, everyone.